Hey, my name is Sar, and welcome to Connected. Oh my love. authentically Kennedy that's me if you are new here welcome to my channel and if you aren't new here welcome back gang this week we are back with another connected feature it's been quite some time since I did a connected feature but I'm so glad we're back we have a super talented super dope performer artist songwriter you seem to sometimes okay so with us this week we have a star what's going on y'all <laughs> Asar is a product of the south side of Chicago and the south suburbs. He got a lot of his early music influence from gospel music and as time went on he started to get heavily influenced by hip-hop. Asar has co-signed with Lupe Fiasco, Ninth Wonder, and has been featured on Netflix's Rhythm and Flow. Today Asar and I are going to talk that good good, passion, purpose, and pursuit. So. Without further ado, ready? Let's get to it. All right, let's do it. So I didn't want to start off with the traditional, tell me about yourself. We're going to get into the nitty gritty. Let's do it. Get to know the real star. Um, so tell me what music means to you and when you first got into creating music. Word. Um, music is a haven. Like, it's, it's where I feel most comfortable, where I feel most authentically uh, myself. Okay. Um, I've been into music since I can remember, to be honest. Uh, it just has changed in terms of what medium. Um, when I can remember as early as like maybe six years old, um, sitting at my grandmother's crib and you know, like writing songs that were terrible. <laughs> um, but they were like me singing. Um, and then I played the piano at a young age, my mom had me in piano lessons, um, when she got married, um, my older brothers, my older stepbrothers, specifically my brother Nick, I shout out to every interview whenever. I'm afraid about Nick. <laughs> <laughs> um, but it's true, like because of Nick, mm -hmm. I got introduced to hip hop, um, and I fell in love from there. Like, it, it, it was something that really grasped me from sitting right in the basement with them, and like, it being something that was for sport, but it was mm -hmm. just fun. To it being like, I love doing this. Mm -hmm. like when I get free time, this is all I'm doing. Mm -hmm. and I'm like, yeah, that's how it's gotten to this point. So when do you notice that your ideas come to you the most? And then when they do come to you, what do you do with those ideas? Um, It's just kind of sporadic throughout the day. I think inspiration hits maybe most in the morning, to be honest. Mm -hmm. uh, either early in the morning or late at night. Like, Throughout the day, if it hits, it's always at random moments and usually at the worst possible time. Mm, you know, like, on the toilet? <laughs> no, not on the toilet. That would actually probably be ideal because oh. I'm sitting there. <laughs> okay. <laughs> um, but no, it's usually like when I'm at work or when I'm driving. Mm -hmm. And um, in those instances, if I'm trying to get an idea down, like I'll either hum a melody into my voice notes or I'll write down that one random bar that like I thought of or I'm like, oh, that's kind of cool. Maybe mm -hmm. I can do about that. Um, but other than that, I, I would say early morning, late at night, those are the times where I'm most tapped in. And it's really because it's the least amount of movement. Like, mm. when I'm able to sit still and not be distracted by anything else and my mind is free, um, that's when I'm able to create the freest. Mm -hmm. Sometimes I'll turn on a beat while I'm, when I'm really tired. Mm -hmm. I've actually done this before. When I'm really tired and trying to get to champagne or get back home, I'll just turn on a beat and start freestyling. Really? Keep like, you up? Yeah, it'll keep me up. What a way, like, like, yeah, I just freestyle <laughs> so I can stay awake. I have to. I, I have to do something where it's like, okay, this is going to keep me occupied. Like, yeah. I have to think. So. And then do you, like, record your freestyles? No, because they are not that good. I won't even pretend like they are. Um, they're good enough to be like, wow, he can freestyle. Mm -hmm. They're not good enough to be like, I can freestyle. Okay, sorry. So walk me through your creative process. Word. Um, it changes pretty often just because mm -hmm. I'm consistently trying to, like, push the envelope forward and I feel like I'm still very young in my craft. Okay. Um, but as of recently, it's, 
I'll cycle through beats or ideas that I've had until something sticks where it's like, okay, this resonates right now. Mm -hmm. um, and once that happens, I'll sit and I'll just kind of write to it. Or if I don't have anything that I really want to write about yet, like I'll just record a melody. Um, and I'll sit and I'll be like, okay. Like, have you, I don't know if you've ever done this, but sometimes, like, I'll just go to cadence. And while I'm going with that cadence, I'll be like, okay, I hear this word here, so let me build off this word. And then, like, that'll help me build the song around it. Um, so, like, it's like the beat that you're rapping or singing to. Oh, okay. Yeah. So why would you call it a beat? Because it's not the beat itself, it's mm -hmm. the cadence. So, like, if the beat was like, one, two, three, four, and I'm like, so what is the significance of the honeybee? Oh, yes, oh, yeah. oh, I see the significance of the honeybee like in, in how symbolically it means something to me as like um, a honeybee can be very reflective of like the black white in America. I think when you think about how honeybees are stigmatized, a lot of people think that honeybees are aggressive creatures mm -hmm. that sting you and you know they're they're feared because of what harm they can do to you. But really these are docile creatures and they only sting you like alarmed or threatened. Um, or you think about how bees produce this product that's honey and how it's taken and it's used uh, for a group and audience that is not them and it's used in a commercial way that's sold and other people have profit off of it. Uh, the same way you think about like black culture in America and how uh, it's taken, it's packaged, it's used for a consumer group that wasn't the original creator. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, and when you talk about just community um, and the way that like these form community and how they work together to like create something that benefits everybody, like it, it all just kind of makes sense to me. Where did where did this idea come from? Were you like Oh, no, I wish that would have been such a yeah, that would have been a story. <laughs> <laughs> it actually came off of like it was super random. I got a beat from my homie and shout out to me. Um, and the beat for some reason reminded me of Flight of the Bumblebee, which is a classical piece by a composer whose name I don't remember right now. Okay. Um, yeah, thank you. <laughs> um, <laughs> and so. Like I started writing about bees, and as I was writing about it, I made a lot of parallels to like myself and a bee, um, and it was like about buzzing and being back home and like creating a, a base for myself and creating like a hive, um, where it's just like I'm, I'm building community, I'm coming into my own, um, and it just had all these metaphors. And as I was writing it, I was just like, this is a really dope concept like I kind of want to build on this. So in the course of we started that project in March. The first song was made in March and then after that I was just like I want to build a project from March to June was the entire process of making it. So my next question is what motivates you and keeps you going? Um I mean more than anything just wanted to be the best version of myself. Like, I think um I truly have a love for music and for the craft of rapping and just writing in general. Um, and I want to see how far I can take it. Like, when all is said and done, what would feel good to me is, is one, leaving no stone in my turn and doing the things that I try. Yeah. And uh, I, like, I think everybody who loves anything wants to be looked at as one of the greatest that what they've done or what they do. Um, and in that same right, like, so why? Um, and I don't think that happens unless I really put in the hours. You can't, you can't cheat, you can't cheat the process. Like, you may get to a level where this is what you wanted to do, mm -hmm. but you can't maintain unless you really work through the process. Mm -hmm. So I'm working through the process. So what has your musical journey taught Asar about Asar mm -hmm. and the world around you? I think what it's taught me about me is I'm a lot more resilient than I give myself credit for. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I think, um, I don't know, I, I, I'm realizing 
what my limits are. How am I trying to say this? It's like a lot of times when it's something that you don't truly care about, mm -hmm. you have a limit and like this is as far as you're willing to go. But when you have something that you truly care about, it's like this is my current limit. Mm -hmm. But I'm going to keep hitting this limit until I eventually inch this limit up to here. And then once I inch this limit up to here, I'm going to continue mm -hmm. until I continue to inch it up. And like just building up that type of trust in myself. Um, has translated to other things in my life and, and has just shown me like what I'm truly capable of as long as I'm resilient. Um, and what it showed me about the world around me is just like, I don't think there's anything that's unfathomable. Like, I, I think um, everything in life is depending on how much work you're, you're willing to put in. And that looks different for everybody, right? Like for one person, in order to get to this place, it might take them more effort. For another person, it may take rigorous work and, and training to get there. Same thing with like college. Like you know that one person who sets the curve in, mm -hmm. in all your classes and doesn't study, just gets yeah, A. It just be smooth. Mm -hmm. um, and then there are other people who have to grind out to get that A, but like it's possible for everybody in the class. All right, Star, let's put on our thinking caps. All right, let's do it. So one day you wake up mm -hmm. and you're no longer here on Earth. You're okay. stuck into an alternate universe okay. where you get to spend the day with your 10 year old self. Okay. So my question is, how do you spend the day with your 10 year old self? And what advice do you tell your 10 year old self? That's a great question. Um, I don't know what advice I would give. Right, I think I'm still figuring out like what our day looks right. like. <laughs> 10 year old me had a lot of energy. Um, I think the advice I give myself is just it all works out. Like I wouldn't give any, <laughs> I wouldn't give any extra feedback mm -hmm. around it. Like I think it would just be whatever it is that you want to do, like you succeeded at it. Okay. Just just reassuring them anything that you want to do, you can make it happen. Where you are currently, you're happy. Mm -hmm. Like it'll all work out. Okay. Um, that's all I would tell it. In terms of what we would do. We probably play basketball. One on one. One on one. Yeah. Just so I can show you, you feel me. Eventually, you get here. Right. You know but you're, you're, not gotta, there. you're not there yet. You just gotta get in the lab. But you get here. Right. Definitely. You get here. So, I, I think that's what we do most of the day. And then we would probably visit. What restaurant did I like at ten? Have you ever been to the Grand Love Cafe? Yes. Okay. They have Asian nachos. Have you ever had those? No. The hold those had on me. Really? At 10? Because of my aunt. My aunt mm -hmm. uh, introduced me to the finer things in life. I was about to say, I didn't movies. touch Grand Lust to at least 16. Mm -mm. <laughs> my, aunt, my aunt had me. She had you straight. Right. She had me right. Um, so I would, I would take 10 year old me there to get those because I haven't had those in little years. Mm. So, yeah. Y'all would have a good day. Basketball, yeah. Asian nachos. Yeah. What else do you need? So, if not music, what else what else would you do um something in stem mm -hmm. something in stem i started off college as a chemistry major nice. um changed my major because i got into physics and was like this is disgusting mm -hmm. um because it's disgusting okay like okay. disgusting no like the worst thing i've ever seen in my literal existence what's disgusting about physics besides everything yes uh <laughs> i would have to say it's only second to everything oh okay yeah. all right <laughs> But yeah, I, it, it was just truly, it was really difficult. Um, and not that chemistry isn't, it's just that it's difficult and not fun. Like mm -hmm. Chemistry is fun to me. Okay. Um, so it would either be chemistry or bio. I just know I like understanding why things work the way they do. Okay. And chemistry is the most basic, fundamental understanding of all of that. Um, and it was just really cool seeing how all that happened in real life. I don't know, I'm sensing a STEM project coming soon. Like how the Bumblebee, project? we're working with the Bumblebee now. Ah, but from, ah. Listen, you could go so many different, like. Your mind. No, your mind. Like we, we just, we just <laughs> made this happen here, Our right? Well, Asar, could you give us a sneak peek by any chance to any exciting projects that you could share with the world like that? No. <laughs> yes, I can. <laughs> um, I'm, I'm currently I'm working on 
an album that I've been working on for the past four years. Ow. Yeah, uh, it's called David. Mm. Um, usually even saying that word on my timeline uh, turns into World 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 War 12. Mm. Um, because I've lied about release dates for years now. Um, right. Yeah, I know. Terrible. Terrible. Movie. <laughs> um, but nah, it's, it's, uh, we're finally back to business on it. Um, we have a tentative release date that I will not talk about because, yeah, we're going to keep it to myself. Mm -hmm. But I'm excited. Um, this will be my first full length project since 2017. Since my first ever project. Like, so I'm excited. It's, it's been years in the making. Um, What's the hold up then? Perfectionism. Mm. Yeah. Good luck with that one. But I mean, it. I, I'm grateful because I've grown so much as an artist that it's allowed me to bring. And also, we weren't prepared. Like, I think I was way, I was really, really ambitious when I first started out with this album. Mm -hmm. But my skill level just hadn't gotten there yet. And like, there was still a lot of me to learn. And I think I'm in a better place now to actually execute on the lot of the ideas I had. Do you um, mix and master? No. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. Rogue so does all that. Who does that? Ro, Ro, my engineer, Ro Marsalis, uh, who works. And has his own studio. It's called Feature Form Studios. If you all need mixing, mastering, engineering, production, you can find all of that at Feature Form Studios. Um, you will not find better engineering for a better price. I guarantee. Thank you. Feature Form. Feature Form Studios. Okay, we'll make sure we put that in the bio. Feature Form. Uh, yeah, the website is FeatureForms.com. <laughs> FeatureForms.com. Go get your music right, mixed and mastered. Correct. Okay, so my last question I have for Asar is if you could give any piece of knowledge, advice, mm -hmm. expertise okay. to an aspiring creative artist, journalist, storyteller, entrepreneur, forex trader. Wow, okay. What would it be for 2021? Lay it on us. Um, honestly, trust in your process. Don't have, have blinders on and just focus on you. The more you work, it's it's what's the saying? It's uh, better to be prepared and not have the opportunity than to have the opportunity to not be prepared. Mm. Um, eventually, as you keep working, like those opportunities are going to present themselves, and as long as you're prepared, you'll continue to move forward. Um, your window is as big as you make it, and that's my biggest advice. Natural light. <laughs> Ha, I was here. <laughs> I was here. <laughs> I was here. Thank you to Asar for this wonderful interview. We talked about his journey and the wonderful places that he will be going. Asar, if you could let everyone know your social media handle so they can follow you on your amazing journey. Thank you. Uh, and thank you for having me. This has been really dope. Yeah. Um, you all can find me on all social media at Asar Music. That's A-U-S-A-R Music. Um, you can find me on all streaming platforms just under Asar. So far, that is all. Sure, like that.